D&D 5e is a dangerous game. You might get hit and take damage. That's scary. So we gotta protect ourselves with good buffs. Welcome to Pack Tactics, where everyone is well protected. Today I'll be talking about School of Abjuration Wizard. They get two features. Let's jump into it. Abjuration Savant. Beginning when you select this school at second level, the gold and time you must spend to copy an abjuration spell into your spell book is halved. This feature is shared between all schools of X Wizard subclasses, but then of course with the fitting school. This is the ribbon feature of the two. It's not going to do much of anything at all in your game. Arcane Ward. Starting at second level, you can weave magic around yourself for protection. When you cast an abjuration spell at first level or higher, you can simultaneously use a strand of the spell's magic to create a magical ward on yourself that lasts until you finish a long rest. The ward has a hit point maximum equal to twice your wizard level plus your intelligence modifier. Whenever you take damage, the ward takes damage instead. If this damage damage reduces the wards to zero hit points, you take any remaining damage. While the ward has zero hit points, it can't absorb damage, but its magic remains. Whenever you cast an abjuration spell of first level or higher, the ward regains a number of hit points, equal to twice the level of the spell. Once you create the ward, you can't create it again until you finish a long rest. This is a buffer to your hit points, and a pretty big one at that. At level 2, you will have around 7 extra hit points if you use this. Which almost doubles your amount of hit points, and that is before you refill it. Unlike temporary hit points, this makes you take less damage. If you are concentrating on a spell, this is especially useful because reducing the damage you take also reduces the DC of the saving throw you need to make to maintain your concentration. If you negate damage entirely, you don't even need to make a save at all. Incredible. A popular idea is to combine this with Armor of Agathis, which damages enemies once you are hit. You could, for example, get Agathis on your wizard through the Mark of the Warding Dwarf. Because of the buffer, which gets depleted before the temporary hit points, Armor of Agathis stays up for an extended period of time. Though personally, I don't believe this is as great as people make it out to be. Yes, the spell becomes a lot better than it normally would be on your wizard. But that doesn't mean there aren't a lot of other better spells you could be casting instead. For non-warlocks, Agathis is expensive. And it's not often the right call to use it. There are certain situations where you might need the Nova that this spell offers and have the time to precast it like in a dungeon. In which case it's a worthwhile strategy, especially if you are multiclassing and at a split level where you don't have a spell known for the highest spell slot you have. Like for example, if you have one level in Artificer and eight levels in Wizard, you have a 5th level spell slot without any spells of that level. There you might want to cast Agathis when you need the Nova. Just in case I'm not clear enough, let me explain it this way. If this wolf does 4 damage to me, then he damages my ward first, but due to me having Agathis active, he takes 5 damage. You see, the ward protects the Agathis. Also, the creature only takes Agathis damage if it hits you with a melee attack. Important detail. But now that I'm done with that little intermission, you may be wondering how do you actually fill the ward in a good way? Well, of course, you need to cast an abjuration spell of first level or higher. I just said that. But there are a couple of ways to get a lot of mileage out of this feature in pretty easy ways. You could, of course, cast Mage Armor at the start of your adventuring day, but then once it hits zero hit points, you don't get to reap its benefits. Once you use the Shield spell to make an attack miss you, it would refill two hit points if you cast it at level 1, which is okay, but not incredible. We need more. In the past, people often used to look at deep gnomes. Look at that. This is the first time I get to talk about gnomes mechanically. Never play a gnome. They are horrible. You know all the negative comments I get on my YouTube channel? It's all from gnomes. Anyways, Deep Gnomes get to pick up the Servant Magic Feat, which allows you to cast Non-Detection, a third level Abjuration spell at will. Which just means you don't need to spend any spell slots on it. That's a pretty quick way to refill the ward, but it's also expensive. You don't get a feat at level 1 because you aren't very human or custom lineage, and you need to invest a feat to get Servant Magic. And worst of all, you're a gnome! But Kobold, it's called Sphere for Nebulon Magic! Magic, not servant magic. 
What a stupid name. No way am I pronouncing that. Anyways, another method that is more popular nowadays is through Armor of Shadows, an Eldritch Invocation. It allows you to cast Mage Armor on yourself at will because Arcane War doesn't limit it to just casting wizard spells. This allows you to refill your ward just fine. You could get access to this Eldritch Invocation through two methods. First would be taking a two level dip into Warlock. I personally think this is a pretty big investment, but it has its merits. Take for example... The classic Hexblade Warlock! Woo! You could pick up a level in this subclass for medium armor and shield proficiency, the shield spell again so you don't need to prepare it through wizard, armor of Agathis, and finally Hexblade's Curse, which combines wonderfully with Magic Missile. And it's really awesome if you find the Wand of Magic Missile. When you get to second level in Warlock, you get to pick two Eldritch Invocations, which would then be Armor of Shadows and, for example, Eldritch Mind for protecting your concentration. Though keep in mind that you are delaying your spell progression by a lot with how Warlock pack slots work. Still though, pretty good. I recommend you get these levels at some point after you get third level spells on your wizard. The second option is with the Eldritch Adept feat. This allows you to pick one from a few Eldritch Invocations. If you go with this route, there are a few considerations to be made. If you don't want to dip for armor and such, I would recommend you pick up this feat ASAP to shore up your defenses. However, if you want to dip for armor, I recommend picking up this feat at your fourth or eighth wizard level. You might say the AC is not really needed, but the effective hit points you get from the increase in AC together with Arcane Ward are multiplicative. Or otherwise said, you are getting more value out of each hit point the higher your defenses are. Tabletop Builds made a wonderful article which talks about this concept. It's called The Squishy Caster Fallacy, authored by Odir and Soma. There's a ton of math in it. Oh my god. There's one other way to refill the ward. It's actually mentioned in the Sage Advice Compendium, so I'll just quote that. Does casting a Alarm as a ritual heal arcane ward. Any abjuration spell of first level or higher cast by an abjurer, including a ritual, can restore hit points to the abjurer's arcane ward. And because it's a ritual, you aren't wasting any of your spell slots. Keep in mind that this takes ages though. One casting takes 11 minutes, and the ward only restores 2 hit points per cast. If you have plus 3 intelligence at level 4, it would take an hour to restore it completely with this method. I do think that at many tables, you should have plenty of time to do this in your average adventuring day, but it's still worth mentioning the cost. But please guys, keep in mind that an hour in-game does not have to take an hour out of game. You can just say, I take an hour to do this and move on if there's no danger. Speaking of the sack, I feel like it's worth pointing out how the ward interacts with things like resistance. This is what the document says. An arcane ward is not an extension of the wizard who creates it. It is a magical effect with its own hit points. Any temporary hit points, immunities, or resistances that the wizard has don't apply to the ward. Good to know! That is everything I wanted to say about the Arcane Ward. Arcane Ward alone is why you picked this subclass, obviously. Add time! This video is sponsored by Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim. It's a campaign setting made by the Dungeon Dudes! Drakenheim has fallen! There's an eldritch contamination and it's spreading all over the world! The nations are not prepared for such an invasion, for they have their own conflicts and selfish motives. The world needs murder hobos like you to put an end to this eldritch invasion and bring peace to the world! Not only do they offer years worth of adventures with your friends, but there's also a new class! The Apothecary, an intelligence-based character. Caster. These guys combine medical knowledge with arcane magic. Their eldritch methods can heal, transform, or protect their allies. But their deadly techniques can harm and kill their enemies. Subclasses include the Deadly Pathogenist, the Grim Reanimator, and the Mad Mutagenist. In addition, apothecaries could choose from over 40 esoteric theories for further customization as they gain levels. There's also one new subclass for all core classes. That's 12 subclasses in total. 50 new spells themed around acid, poison, and necrotic damage. You can conjure acid rain! There's even a spell that makes corpses explode. They just go... 
There's even tool feats! The book improves crafting in general! New weapons, new pots, and much, much more! Check out Drakenheim on their Kickstarter! I can't wait to see the new class, it sounds super fun! Anyways, it's time to continue with level 6, Projected Ward. Starting at 6th level, when a creature that you can see within 30 feet of you takes damage, you can use your reaction to cause your ward to absorb that damage. If this damage reduces the ward to 0 hit points, the the warded creature takes any remaining damage. This reminds me of Peace Cleric. There are similar considerations here. You need to take into account that if you use your reaction for this, you are mostly left defenseless without the option to cast shield, absorb elements, or silvery barbs. So you should use this when there's more worth in protecting someone else over yourself. For example, if you are behind full cover and your friend is out of position in the open, concentrating on a really important spell, it might might very well be worth it. Again, keep in mind that if the damage is reduced completely, they don't have to make a save to maintain concentration at all. Improved Abjuration, their 10th level feature. Beginning at 10th level, when you cast an Abjuration spell that requires you to make an ability check as part of the casting of that spell, as in Counterspell and Dispel Magic, you add your proficiency bonus to that ability check. This is similar to Bard's Jack of All Trades, which also works on check for counterspell and dispel magic. And you even beat them at it. There's not much to say about this feature. It improves the likelihood of these spells succeeding. 20% of the time, it will change a failure to a success at level 10. And at level 20, it's 30%. I recommend you pick up Counterspell before Dispel Magic, as Dispel Magic is accessible to basically any caster. But for an Abjurer, there's a little bit more of a motive to pick both. Up yours, DM! We'll see who counters who. Capstone time. Spell resistance. Starting at 14th level, you have advantage on saving throws against spells. Furthermore, you have resistance against the damage of spells. While it's becoming more and more common that spells are replaced with spell-like abilities in the newer stat blocks, scary enemies in tier 4 basically always have spells. That means this is a really good protection feature. It might not be too fancy, but it certainly improves your resilience once more, which is basically the goal of this subclass. I like it. it it's a simple feature. You, you don't need to be creative with these features all the time, you know? Conclusion! It's awesome. There's a lot of fun bits of optimization here. I don't really have much to say besides that. Like the Blade Singer, this is incredible as a straight wizard. Drakenheim hopes to earn your support on their Kickstarter, and I hope to earn your subscription! Make sure to buff yourself. It's a dangerous world out there. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.